to secondary school together from form one to form five. We had a mutual interest in sports and then we developed that and became business partners. We don't believe that he's dead, but he was a very generous person. He uh, was one of the pillars of sports in Lagos and Nigeria. Deji had so many plans and only just he was only to, able to implement just a few of them. Thank you. Okay, now before we do the young work address, let me specially invite our guest speaker and our contributor, Mr. Godwin Enahem. Help me welcome Dr. Mal Isabuti. First thing we would like to thank you. Our topic, sports as a tool for youth engagement and social orientation. I'd like to call the chairman of the Lagos State Post Commission, Mr. Shalai Begu, to give us his welcome address. Please, we want to see us here, we have to give thank you very soon. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are very privileged to have you here to celebrate the memory of our brother, a dad, our mentor, a friend, and the former chairman of the Lagos State Sports Commission. Uh, at times, I forget how I should be a school servant, but uh, so let me first observe the protocols. I welcome uh, the Honorable Commissioner for Youth and Social Development, my Oga, Mr. Shev Mudaudu. Uh, I welcome uh, the Tinubu family, represented by Mr. Shola Tinubu, and of course, our mommy, Fashola Kabola, as well as Mrs. Bola Tinubu. And lastly but not least, welcome Yemisi. God bless you, we're happy to have you here today. So on behalf of the his families, the Tinubus, you know, there are many families that you represented. The Tinubus, the sports family, government, so many of his boys, there are some boys there you can see with their, the hashtag DT leaves on their, on their tops in orange. They are some of the guys who drum and entertain us regularly at Europa. Park. They are all over the place, influenced by DJ. We welcome you to the second Digital Memorial Symposium in his honor. His passion was sports development, but his first love was actually athletics. Only MC is nodding ahead because that's where they met, through athletics. Most people think that Digi's first love is football, but it's actually athletics. Um, one day he was um, returning from a trip abroad and he went to, and uh, the driver and some people went to pick him. Yemisi is laughing already. I will surprise you. Uh, went to pick him. And as they passed through the traffic and got to uh, Maryland bus stop, heavy traffic, you know how it was in those days. You know, uh, he saw, he noticed a woman and a child. The woman was weeping profusely by the corner of that, um, I think the Wando uh, filling station. And she was weeping so badly. And he wound down and, first of all, asked the people in the car, why is that woman crying? And they said, ah, okay, we don't know why she's crying. And he said, ah, call her for me, call her for me. And then he dipped his hand in his pocket and brought out all the money he had on him. It's about 30 to 40,000 naira was on him. Everything he had on him. And he wound down the, the glass and gave it to the woman and said, whatever is making you cry, just so stop crying. I don't like to see women and children crying. And the woman was rooted on the spot. She was shocked. She was shocked. And, and she was asking people, who is that man? She said, come on. He said, hey, hey, hey. she was perplexed. But that is the digital book that I know. That's the digital book many of us knew. And it's on the back of this. I welcome you to this second digital book memorial symposium. Thank you. Well, that's the mark of the man. I'm sure every single one of us here, if we, we have a story to tell about DG. And that's why we'll continue to honor his memory. Um, we've come to the business of today, which is the lecture. And like I said, 
our topic is sports as a tool for youth engagement and social orientation. We carefully chose this topic because we feel Nigeria as a country, we are not reacting. We are not reacting to our youth. Our youth, with all due respect to popular culture, are, a lot of our youth are being influenced wrongly. Ladies and gentlemen, let me respectfully welcome to a rousing ovation, Dr. Larry Izamu. Good morning, everybody. I want to stand on existing uh, protocol, but permit me to say, starting out, that when my brother, Deji, called me and said I'll be doing this this morning, the only answer that um, was possible was Y-E-S, yes. Yes, because uh, it is said that to live in the hearts of those who love you is not to die. And that is what we have had with our friend and brother, who we continue to ask God daily to give eternal rest, Deji Tinubu. I recall the last time I talked with him, he kept saying, senior, senior. And I said, am I that old now? I thought I was not really old. And I said to him, you are the number one person when it comes to sports in Lagos. And if you call me senior, and I answer that senior, you may tell me to bring my card of practice, and then I'll have to return back home, not being able to practice. Today we have Madame here. It's my prayer for you and the children, the entire family, that the words of Numbers 6, 24 to 26 will continue to come true for you. The Lord will bless and keep you, and the children will be gracious to you, his countenance will continue to shine on you and it will continue to do you good, you and the children. Ladies and gentlemen, in 1954, something happened in the USA. A young man's bicycle was stolen and he decided to talk to a policeman. He said to the policeman, I'm not asking you to go and arrest the thief. All I want you to do is to get me the thief so that I will whoop him using his exact words. The policeman said to him, you have raw energy, I'll help you. As a 12 year old, channel that energy to something very, very good. The policeman was a boxing trainer and told the kid to join him in the boxing gym. Six years after that event, the kid became an Olympic champion. I've just told you how Muhammad Ali started out because someone channeled energy that would have gone into perhaps killing someone or criminality to sports. And that's how I opened up talking about sports as a tool for youth engagement and social reorientation. Abra Deji talked about um, athletics being number one for DG, our dear friend. For me, it is boxing before football and others. And so I'll be taking you to the ropes square as I give examples. Sports is a way of life, a way of life. So that youth out there who would have gone into criminality, who would have given government a lot of troubles, who would have caused sleepless nights for those who govern. Another very good example is, Michael, is Mike Tyson. Tyson, at the age of 12, was so bad, robbing people, that he was put in a reformatory. A man looked at him and said, no, let's channel this lifestyle that is bad. And as you know, Mike Tyson made over $300 million from the fight game, the fistic game we call boxing. If you've heard the name, the executioner, Bernard Hopkins. Bernard Hopkins stabbed people on the streets of Philadelphia. Bernard Hopkins became a super, super boxer and erased the record of the Reverend George Foreman as the oldest person to win a boxing heavyweight title. There's a story 
of Julian J. Rock Williams. Last year, he defeated Heard to become a world champion. Here in Lagos, and uh, we give kudos to the Lagos State Government for what we're hearing, that they are beginning to turn the place around. We have the Maracana Stadium. The Maracana Stadium in Ajegule. A lot of you perhaps know, and some don't know, that Emmanuel Amuneke, former African footballer of the year, former coach of Uganda, the one who won the Under-17 World Cup for Nigeria, was playing at the Maracana on a sandy pitch. Odion Egalo recently got honored as the highest goal scorer at the last AFCON. He too grew up in Ajegule, playing on the sandy surface of the Maracana. Now if we look at youth, you want to say the first thing you want to do is to understand them. And after you understand them, you engage them. And the Pan-Canadian Consortium for School, Health and Youth Engagement, they call the us out there in Canada, YE, Youth Engagement. They have made some prescriptions, which I think we can adapt. We adopt and we adapt. Thank you for listening. You know, I was taking notes as if I was in class. I'm sure that too. <laughs> Once again, Dr. Larry Izamuji. Now, uh, without wasting much time, um, he's talk, Larry's talked a lot about the things that sports can do in terms of engagement and taking kids off the streets. So, that was particularly why we brought our next speaker as a contributor to show what organizations, even religious organizations, churches, mosques can do for kids because as a social service. Of course, everybody knows about MFM Football Club and everybody knows what they've done. Let me humbly welcome my friend and brother, Godwin Enahena. Good afternoon, everybody. I was sitting there and I was asking myself, how can everyone be talking about one man and we're all saying the same thing about him, positive things? Three blind boys came to my studio a few years ago. They wanted to have education, they wanted to go to university. And I said, what do I do? I mean, something moved me out of the studio and I said, okay, guys. I'll pay your school fees to universities, three of you. I don't know you from Adam, three of you. I did that knowing that I have people like DT that I could talk to. And it was about the first person I called. And I said, DT, I just came out of the studio and I saw three young blind boys. And they said they have gotten admission. All they just want is school fee. And we're talking about two million. And he said, ah, Godwin. Don't you they must go to school, they must go to school. I won't tell you what he did because as you speak now, they are in 300 levels. We are talking about engaging, empowering, and of course, educating the child. Through the MFM templates, we've been able to engage the youth. We've been able to empower them to be able to educate them. Because a lot of these players cannot put food on the table. Some of them have built houses. Some of them have gone to school. Dr. Lopea pays their school fees. Unilag, IFE, everywhere. Thank you everyone and God bless you all. Thank you so much. On behalf of the Lagos State Sports Commission, Sport Vision and Sports Writers Association of Nigeria, and the Kingsley family. We'd like to thank each and every one of you, most especially our special guest, Dr. Mary Zanuke, Dr. Merakina, and every other guest, each and every one of you are very important. The Honorable uh, 
Thank you very much for coming.